Welcome to part three, class one, the power of brushwork. Sky and trees is the focus for these seven weeks. So lots of fun. So now we're to the fun part of the class. We've gotten past all the uh, boring me just showing you how the class works and everything. And we're going to be making however you decide to do it. And you don't have to do five. You don't have to do six. You can just do <laughs> one or two or three, however many you have time for. Um, but I want to talk about it a little bit because you can see on these examples that I'm dealing with different types of day, different times of day, sorry, different types of days, you know, overcast or really clear or hazy or nighttime. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a really good to experiment and to kind of show. And then if you remember back to the bands of color that we were talking about, just kind of squinting your eyes a little bit of, at these examples or whatever it is, just kind of picture as I go down from the tops of each one of those images. And again, I want you to think ish. When I say blue violet, it's blue violet ish at the top, like in this top yellow one, right? You could, that's not very obvious at all. Um, the top, I don't think my cursor shows up for you guys, um, but it's an ish. And again, all of these colors are changeable. You know, you're the poet of your painting. So you get to choose which ones you use more of or less of or ignore um, completely. So going from the tops of each one of these images, and again, the yellow one on the middle and the gray one on the, with the bright pink and yellow clouds, it's not going to be very obvious at all. But uh, violet blue-ish towards the top, and then it turns to a greenish blueish color, and then below that, kind of the biggest area oftentimes is a more of a yellow greenish zone. Then it goes down, and these bands get much tighter towards the bottom. Orange yellow zone or orange yellowish, orange reddish down to kind of a purple or a violet reddish. Can you see that in a, most all of those images, that kind of those bands? And I want you guys to start observing if you don't live in Oregon and you actually get to see the sky from time to time, not just gray clouds. So begin to observe it and begin to observe that in the photos that, you know, references, whatever it is you decide to do this assignment based on, you know, go out, go to Pinterest, whatever, Go and collect some images, you know, maybe collect three, four, five, however many you think you might do as references and begin to kind of observe that color breakdown in the sky. And I'm going to have to grab that painting before that drip touches it here. So I'll get I back up. You, I see get you broke more. the rules a little bit. What's that? I see that you broke the rules of the bands that you just explained a little bit in the yellow picture yeah. on the, the far right set the upper yellow picture yeah the the top is lighter than the middle and yes, it's lighter yes. than the horizon and i do see that sometimes especially when there's like sure. a lot of haze or a lot of clouds it will definitely get lighter but it you know i also could be zooming in on the sky a little bit right where i'm not seeing all the bands maybe i only got to that yellow greenish zone of the sky and not showing you the zenith so a lot of times <laughs> you just don't see the top of the sky in your you know, depending on what you're painting. You know, absolutely. I'm a yeah, big believer in know the rules so you can break them. Exactly. All right. Before I get Smurf blood all over my painting here. Thank you. I was going to have to ask you soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to doing these little guys for a while here. Looks like I might have to move the camera back, but first we're gonna move the camera forward. Can you please tell us the colors on the palette? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so what I have at the top is my split primary palette. These are the colors that are in my suggested shopping list. And I'm going to start, Lisa, with the ones that um, if you are new to painting or if you want to use a really limited palette, these are the colors that I would suggest you start with. Um, is 
titanium white, which is kind of always my always color. Um, the other whites are great too, but I just prefer titanium. It's the easiest to use. It's right in the middle. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. It mixes really well and it doesn't crack over time like zinc white does. So that's why I, I just I just keep it pretty simple and for the most part just use zinc or I mean titanium white. Uh, a lot of artists will actually mix titanium and zinc. Um, and I'm sure they have their reasons, but I'm too lazy. All right, over here, I've got Hansa yellow light. You could be using a cadmium yellow light or a cadmium lemon here. Hansa yellow light is a bit more transparent than the cadmium colors, but a whole lot cheaper and a little less toxic. So I, I'm using the Hansa colors more and more. I also, as you'll learn or maybe already know about me, I do like transparency in my paints. That's kind of where some of the glow and different effects that I go after. It's not really what's in vogue right now. Right now is very much the a la prima, meaning painting all at once. And uh, when you use transparent colors, it's a little harder to paint all at one time, meaning I don't let my layers dry if I'm doing it that way. And you may want to lean towards more opaque colors when you're choosing. So you may want a cadmium and a cadmium and uh, yeah, a blue that's got it. Because basically this color is semi-transparent. This color is very transparent. Uh, this color is opaque. This color is transparent. This color is semi-transparent, semi-transparent, transparent, opaque. And I don't know. <laughs> but it goes back to the fancy uh, yellow light. Uh, right here, we have Indian yellow. For years and years and years as a teacher, I did not show Indian yellow or use it in my classes because I found it to be kind of confusing for a lot of students. But the truth is, it's one of my very favorite colors, and I use it all the time in my paintings. It is a strange color, so if you use it and you just find it too weird, I completely understand that you might not want to use it. It is very, very, very transparent. It is very strong and it does something quite weird when it's mixed with white is it becomes a yellow. So you see it's an orange and it becomes a yellow as we add white to it. So it's a strange color. It mixes kind of strangely with other colors but I just decided to stop lying to everybody and be honest. And the <laughs> other thing is, is that I used to use three yellows. I would use a, a Hansa yellow light or a cadmium yellow light and a Hansa yellow medium or a cadmium yellow medium, meaning a more orangish or warmish version. This is a yellow that leans towards green, makes really bright greens. And then I always wanted a yellow that leans towards orange. But the truth is, is that if I just take a little bit of my Indian yellow and mix it with that Hansa yellow, I get these beautiful, warm yellows that are basically exactly the same, except for mine are somewhat transparent comparatively. So something to experiment. Um, you know, if you decide that these colors are too transparent and get too muddy or you're not, you know, you want to do more a la prima, Again, painting all at once and be able to layer your colors, then you may want to lean towards the more opaque of each of these. This is a cadmium red light. Um, I do use sometimes a more transparent color, but cadmium red light is just a super strong, super uh, powerful color. Um, be careful with cadmium paints. They are a little bit more on the dangerous side, so definitely don't eat it. Don't let your cat eat it. Next to that, I've got what's called quinacridone red. For those of you who used to paint a number of years ago and haven't painted in a while, this would be what you'd consider an alizarin red. Oh, okay. um, alizarin is a, not a very strong color and it's not very light fast, meaning that it fades over time. So quinacridone is the synthetic version of it. And if you see a color called alizarin permanent, it is basically made up with quinacridone. They just name it alizarin permanent because a lot of older painters or you know people that are really think that they love alizarin um, are more comfortable with it. But the how truth do you spell? Is, can, sorry, how do you spell quinacridone? Uh, carefully. 
That's my line. All right. Q U I N A C R I D O N E. Thank you. And red is R E D. Um, but yeah, if I want to make, I can turn this color into an alizarin crimson by simply just adding a touch of ultramarine blue. It becomes a very nice, dark, cool red. But the truth is you can't make a, an alizarin into a quinacridone. Um, so that's a lot of the reason why I choose my colors is I'm trying to find the colors up here again with the split primary, two reds, two yellows, two blues, that can do the most. Somebody asked about, um, what was the blue that somebody asked me to put out first? Cerulean. Cerulean. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, I'll, I'll get to it here in a second. Quinacridone red, ultramarine blue, you know, it might be called French ultramarine. It just depends on the brand. I believe they're the same. Um, it's a semi-transparent, warmish or reddish blue. Makes nice purples. Um, it's a really nice color. Makes great shadows. Um, next to that is what I have is manganese blue. Um, I used cerulean for a long, long time. And then one of my students introduced me to manganese and asked me why I don't use manganese instead. And um, I had no good answer. And I started experimenting with their manganese. Manganese can become cerulean. Very oh, wow. Easy. Magic. It's, it's a fantastic color, but cerulean, Magic. cerulean cannot become manganese. Cerulean is a slightly more grayed down blue. Um, manganese blue hue is what I buy. If you buy real manganese blue, it's really expensive and it's oftentimes quite weak. I think that manganese, the mineral is fairly expensive. And so manganese, so and all being all being honest again, is actually a phthalo derivative. It's made up of phthalo blue. So if you are braver than me and have better paint control than I do, you could use ultramarine and phthalo blue. I just, phthalo blue just gets away from me all the time. It just, you know, I can tell any paintbrush I've ever used with phthalo blue, it's still stained bright blue. Um, so I prefer manganese blue. Again, it's just a color I can control. Sorry, let me hang that up. And um, yeah, and it makes great colors. And I'm going to be curious here because I've, right beside it there, I've got that cobalt teal, which is just such a gorgeous color. But I kind of think that we can make a cobalt teal by just adding a little yellow to this, making it slightly greener. No, not dark enough. Alan, I'll wait. Oh, sorry. Call mom. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I can get really close to it. I'm going to add a little more white to give it more. Michael, can you just repeat, please, what the blues are going from left to right and then down the corner? Sure. Right now, I've got ultramarine blue and manganese blue hue. And then below that, I've got a, a bit of a phthalo green. And so these three colors, the ones, when I put them on the sides like this, they are called my guest color. So this is the family that basically invited to every painting I do. And then from time to time, I like to experiment. I like to invite some other colors and I will usually put them on the side, oftentimes even all on the left side, uh, but just to experiment. But I put them in line here because they just kind of seem to fit. Uh -huh. Thalo green is so strong and thalo green is just a color that I've never been able to really make. So there's times, you know, especially in the spring or if I'm in the Mediterranean or Yikes. somewhere, it just oh. is so bright. And the truth is that phthalo green does really neat things uh, with blues. And uh, one of my favorite combinations is actually phthalo green and quinacridone red. But that's more tropical. The ones you mixed before. Yeah, those would be kind of more tropical colors. Um, but they can be really nice in a really bright springy sky midday. But with the quinacridone red next to this phthalo green, when they meet up, 
they become really, really dark. They just neutralize each other really well. And in fact, if you uh, paint with something called chromatic black, I believe those are the two main colors in chromatic black. It makes these really interesting great blacks. But one of my favorite parts about it is when you add white to it, depending on you know how much of each color, it actually makes a blue or a beautiful purple. Mm. So it's a fun, fun one to play with, to experiment with. I just kind of. Are these There's... gamblings, Michael? Is this yeah, gambling brand? I've got all gambling color besides my white is just some cheap tube I bought online. <laughs> Since I don't have any art supply stores anywhere near, which do you, if you order online, which do you prefer? <clears throat> Dick Blick or Jerry's or? Uh, I mostly buy from Blick, but truthfully, whoever's got the best sale going. Gotcha. Or pays for shipping or who will get it to gotcha. you. Gotcha. Okay, so. Those are great stormy colors, stormy sky colors. Yeah, it does some neat things and then, mm -hmm. yeah. And, Let's do a sky with those colors, right? Look, it gets over Michael, here. Michael, that's Quinac, or not Quinac, I'm sorry. That's phthalo green rather than phthalo blue. Yeah, phthalo green. Okay. Anyways, um, and then over here, uh, I just have gr uh, Payne's gray, which is just a very bluish, uh, dark color. Um, can't really see a lot of the really dark colors until you add some white to them. So a lot of times I have to do like little tests, but you'll see when I mix it as a gray that it's pretty bluish. Um, so I thought that might be kind of interesting in some of the sky colors. We may not even need it today. All right, so my first little demo. Man, can you guys see the uh, radiating lines? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we all know, we cover that, um, we all know the perspective lines in landscape, right? You know, things, makes things look like they're, ugh, casting a shadow there, makes things look like they're coming towards us, right? Can you guys see that? Yep. A little bit. Yeah. They're Maybe faint. Darken it really quickly. Um, let me just grab my pencil and I'll just darken them real fast. So as things recede into space, can you see the lines now? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very well. All right. So you kind of understand that things get smaller as they go back into space. Right? Yes. So you've all seen that demo before? Yep. So if I wanted to have like a fence post here and a fence post here, it gets smaller and smaller. Or the one that we did as kids all the time were railroad tracks. Right. So that's, you know, how we can tell perspective on land. A lot of times when I'm starting my painting, I'll actually just do a real quick gradient line so I can tell when things are in perspective. But what I want you to be aware of in the sky it's the same. It's just in reverse. So as things go back into space in the sky, they're doing the same thing. The things up high, just like here, the things down low are generally the closest. And then as they go back, they get you know further away. That happens in the sky as well. Usually the clouds that are the furthest away from us are going to be closest to the horizon line and then they get closer and closer as they come up over us again thinking the dome of the sky i did not realize that until probably a little too embarrassingly far into my career and uh it was kind of a another aha moment so we want to be thinking about perspective on our ground planes always of course but also looking for the perspective in the sky if it's there Another thing that will often happen is that the clouds will appear more sideways down low. And as they go up into space, 
they'll take on more of an angle a lot of times, which is kind of an interesting effect that happens. The other thing is, is as you're looking at clouds far away, we're looking at them, the sides of them. And then we begin to see underneath them a little bit. And then we begin to see underneath them even more until when you're looking directly overhead, you're just looking at the underside of a cloud oftentimes. That makes sense? So let's use yeah. this really quickly as an example. I'm just gonna mix up some very loose, quick paint here. Just put a little ultramarine at the top here. I'm gonna add some of my manganese to that mix. For some reason, a little bit sticky. Just putting this on really quick. We'll make this will be my throwaway, but just to show you something here. Michael? Yeah. What is the dark uh, directly below the uh, white? Oh, uh, Payne's gray. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not positive I'll use it today or not, but nice to have a quick, a quick color that I can just darken things with a little bit if I want to. And the color under the phthalo green? is cobalt blue cobalt teal it's just a it's one of those colors that i had to buy when i saw it at the art store even though i never use it because it's just so pretty in the tube art stores are dangerous i think there's a deep of that color which is pretty yeah they have because that one's already got kind of a white or something added to it they have um the uh, just, they, I have a couple different variations of it. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, and it's usually more um, transparent. Yeah, and it is uh, phthalo, phthalo green. Phthalo turquoise or, yeah. And it is phthalo green that you're using there, not phthalo blue? Yeah, phthalo blue here. Yeah, sorry, I shouldn't maybe not no, even- No, phthalo say. green, right? Phthalo green is what I have, yeah. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have squeezed those out. That might be more confusing. We just do a quick reversal of that on the ground. I think maybe the reflection a little bit here. We got a little too messy here. Let's just wipe that back off. Thank you, oils, for being forgiving. I don't need to spend much time with this because it's not important. Are you using just a piece of um, board for that, or yeah, it's just a scrap, paper? yeah, scrap piece of board here. Over here will be paper on the other <coughs> one. Paper. All right, very loosely, very messy. That is kind of the reflection in theory of the sky. Kind of looks like it, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if I wanted to bring in some clouds, I'm just going to do them with pretty simple, thick white here. Again, I'm thinking of that sense of, um, of perspective a little bit, things getting a little further. So down at the bottom, my clouds are smaller, and uh, just 
kind of going along the horizon. Then they're going to get a little bigger. And then bigger again. Until the top, maybe they're really large. Right? I could also play up their angles a little bit if I wanted to. I saw that this morning in my morning pictures of the sky. The clouds were totally at an angle right overhead. But... So you guys see how just kind of hinting at a little bit of that sense of depth and just kind of keeping that in mind. A lot of times students want to just say, oh, there's some clouds in the sky and pretend this is my little painting over here. And... This is my sky section. And there's like, oh, it's, you know, there's just some clouds. So it's just cloud, 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 cloud. And that's just not how it appears very often. It's just not a bunch of floating sheep all the same size. The clouds will change uh, size. They look and look for that. Look for the change in size. Look for the change in angles. Look for the... Uh, just look for what is interesting, what's going on in there that might be helpful to try to capture, All right? And then we can just do very something quick. Now here, we got our landscape. Let's make that a little grayer back there. All right. I guess I should have put my clouds in here too to reflecting them. You know, just hint at those real quick somehow. But does that make sense? Thinking about the sense of perspective a little bit in there as well? Right. Yes. All right, cool. that in the garbage and move on. Actually, I guess I can wipe it down and paint over it again. Hey, Michael. Yeah. I have a question. Please. Well, when you did this demo, do you, were, when you took your brush away from the canvas, were you wiping it at all? No, that's just... why I got so messy and moved. Well, it looks good. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, because we're going to talk a little bit about that. And okay. I your next question would be, I'm a mind reader, watch this. Is it better to paint over the top or to isolate the clouds and paint them separately? Is that your next question? Yes. Good job. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, and the answer is yes. That both are great for different purposes. A lot of times when I have like a big cloud, I will just not paint it. You know, I'll leave that area kind of white or whatever, and then come back and paint the clouds separately. But sometimes uh, painting wet into wet, meaning putting a, the, the paint stroke over the top of already wet cover of canvas can be really useful. Oftentimes when you paint wet into wet, if you are using any kind of a pressure with your brush, you are you run the risk of mixing. But sometimes clouds aren't, you know, bright, bright, bright white or whatever else. And so a little bit of mixing can actually be pretty great. Um, other times what I'll do is kind of paint the gradient of the sky. And then I will use a handy dandy paper towel 
which is the equivalent almost of a, an eraser that doesn't work that good on oil paints, but it will, uh, I can remove a lot of that paint and then I can come back in. So let me grab my roll of paper towels with the hints on myself, there they are. So, is this a board or cardboard? This is just uh, paper, oil, okay. paper for painting oils on. Um, I don't know if I've used this pad before or not. Um, and then I just put blue tape on there. Um, I guess I should start with kind of a basic, kind of a bluish um, landscape, kind of a normal midday, but slightly accentuated because I want to bring out, I want you guys to see some of these colors. How to do it so you can see my, there we go. Everybody can see everything okay? Oh, let me turn on the lights so it's not so dark. Got my new lights. Bang. <laughs> oh, what a difference. Yeah, it's bright. Okay, so the only one that runs. I'm going to just do a very simplistic kind of a, I don't know, seascape. Let's just do a kind of like a day at the beach, maybe. But this painting's mostly about the sky, so I'm just kind of quickly tossing in a horizon line there. Um, and I want it to be a kind of a, a nice sunny, maybe maybe there's not even hardly any clouds, maybe just a tiny bit of atmosphere. So I'm just going to, you know what, let's go ahead and even experiment with our cobalt here. Obviously, this color is too bright at least for the top, but maybe it would work a little lower here. Let's see if we can incorporate some of that color that we only get to see when we're in Italy and the Bahamas, maybe in Hawaii, we get to see it. It's, I'm gonna get it a little more bluish as it goes up. I mean, purplish, a little more towards the red, it gets a little darker, so I'm, I'm watching for light me, light I'm light just light. adding a little bit of ultramarine. He says it basically holds it three different ways. Kind of dark, isn't it? Man, that is, I wouldn't, it's this could be a lot prettier. Let's, let's get some lighter color in there, shall we? Not necessarily. I'm going to bring in some light in there. Somebody's mic is open. This mic is always open. We're glad. <laughs> so I'm just kind of adding some white to lighten that up. That sky was too dark. Remember I read about that? Who would ever make their sky too dark? I'll tell you who, me, and nearly every time. And we go back and lighten it up. Michael, do you find that the blue tape messes with your uh, values and colors and stuff? A little bit, yeah. I grew up with two little sisters. I'm pretty good at ignoring things. I thought about getting like some other tape, but I'm right now it's like I got to use up what I have. That's kind of where I'm at too. Yeah. Okay. Now what? Now what happens to my sky as it gets closer to the horizon line? Anybody remember our colors kind of as we're going down? It gets lighter. Yellowish. Yay! Yeah, yellowish. I'm adding a little more light white and you get a little bit of this. That yellow. would de depend on the time of day, wouldn't it? It does. Well, the strength of it will completely depend on the time of day. But you will even on a lot of days, and again, it can be very, very, very subtle. You'll notice that the color along the horizon band, again, it's an ish. We're not saying that it's yellow. It's just slightly more yellow than the... Uh, area above it. And then we're gonna get down to our orange and our reddish. Obviously gonna be way too dark and way too bright. A little white, let's pink it down. Still really that 
quinacridone is a pretty strong color. In fact, I'm just gonna wipe, I'm gonna lightly wipe with my paper towel just to take some of that pigment off so that there's not so much there to keep contaminating when I bring in some white to kind of lighten that. In the next paintings, I'll pre-mix some of these colors because this is uh, kind of a weird way to be doing it, just adding the paint right on there and mixing on the spot. Kind of pretty. Looks artificial, but and not like a sky I would probably put in one of my paintings very often, but I sure would be happy if I went to the beach and saw that. This is going to sound ignorant, I think, Michael, but what kind of uh, brush are you using? Uh, just a big flat. It's a size eight. Is it hog's hair or? Oh, yeah. It's an interlocking, chunking hog's hair bristle brush. Okay. It seems to be softer than what I bought. Uh, it's not more, soft, more used, it? maybe, huh? Yeah, it's definitely been used, abused, and yeah. I'm just trying to create some kind of a feeling of some kind of ground, beachy, groundy. Thing here, just to kind of give this sky a little somewhere to live. Again, just quick, I'm just trying to create a couple different bands of, of color. Very, very bright, but I kind of think we can kind of see those bands of color in there. Yes. Um, being lazy and not really cleaning the brush because I want to keep painting quickly just to keep things moving, but little beach. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love it. Who doesn't want to go build a sand castle there? I guess these are just some hills or some trees in the back there along the beach. I don't know. All right. I think that kind of does it for that little guy.
Um, I wanted to have at least one clear sky. If I were to spend a little more time, and maybe I should, I would probably actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to make that sky, my brush dirty. I'm going to have a huge pile of dirty brushes by the end of this class. Just because I'm being trying to be fast. Bring up more white. So I'm just not happy with the, the bands. So you can see there, lightning towards the yellow first. And then I'm going to take that up and create hopefully first a little time. softer, more subtle gradation of the blue. Hopefully this feels a little better to me, not so cartoonish. And our first assignment would be to create those kinds of bands that just graduated. Yeah, that's really what I want you to do is to kind of just to realize that um, that these bands exist. It's a fun way to experiment with some color. It's a fun way to start to just focus in on what feels like kind of a little thing, but it's actually everything. Because again, these lights, these colors are what are affecting that whole scene. There we go, I think that feels a little bit better. Now we also are gonna think about in these future ones, where is my light source, right? Is it behind, is it like the sun setting? Is it behind us? Like the sun is hitting the scene. Is the sun off to the right? Is it off to the left? Is it overhead, right? That's gonna greatly affect also the scene. So let's think, let's do a, a sunset. Let's go with a pretty extreme gradation from kind of a warm base up to a kind of a darker purple, but quite a bit darker than this one. Does that sound all right? So we're just going to do a big jump. We're going to go, from, you know, kind of almost like a midday to, you know, it does have kind of a sunset feeling because that band of red is really quite bright, um, you know, very high saturation. I could probably stand to also lighten that up, but I can actually hear what you guys are all thinking. And you're all very rude. You're just saying enough with this one. Let's go to the next. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. You're right. So I'm gonna start with my bottom in this one, and I'm just gonna make a very kind of a warmish, reddish base. So this one doesn't really have a horizon line to say. I've already got kind of a plan for it, but it's no horizon line. You're not seeing the ground. Okay, what do I want to do? I want to lighten that up first. If I go over to some of these pinks over here, use some of that. So it's already, it might be getting a little lighter, but it's also getting cooler as it's going away from that sunset a little bit, but it, there's more atmosphere and things kind of getting caught in there. Michael, could you um, just give us the combo that you created to make that peachy color? This one here? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always hard to remember. Yeah, I, I believe it was all <laughs> both yellows and both reds. Let's try to make it again. Um, let me just... This is what happens when I end up painting really quickly. In my left hand, I'm holding like... <laughs> paintbrushes, my paper towels. Yeah. Normally I have one, one paintbrush and my paper towels are usually under my left armpit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't so, mean to make you go back, but no, yeah. Just a I, cool I you make me organized. Gradation um, there. All right. So I'm just gonna grab a bit of this red, which is my more purplish red. It's a little cooler, but it is transparent. Touch of my cadmium. It is uh, so strong. Some of my Indian yellow and a touch of this uh, yellow. And let's just see where we get with it. So super hot, beautiful. Oh my gosh, I want to use that. <laughs> so hot. All right, and that 
that's crazy, right? Yeah, um, and then I probably just added some white. Yeah, that that looks right. Pretty close, yeah. I mean, yeah. if I wanted it a little more pinky than orangey, I could add a little more red. If I wanted it more, you know, a little cooler, but more orange, add more yellow. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. No, always you guys call me out because I kind of forget what I'm teaching and stuff or I think I'm teaching one thing, but another thing that happens is a little more interesting. This class, again, is for you. So make sure you're getting as much of what you want from it. Woo, that's hot. Nice. To cool down real fast. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the top and just kind of see if I can figure out a color where I want it to get. I'm just going to go ahead and grab some black and I'm going to grab some of this, my quinacridone blue, because it makes a really beautiful purple, actually, strangely, with um, with the uh, with the quinacridone. So manganese blue hue and quinacridone can make a really interesting glue, but I did not clean the black off my brush, so it's going to be a contaminated purple, which I'm going to be fine with. Very plummy with that black in there. And then let's get towards the top. We want it to get a little more blue. Add some more of that black up here. That kind of works. Add some white because I don't need it that dark. A little more of my quinacridone, a little red, more red at the bottom. Is it? No. Because it's got to cool down from there up to here. So it's going to be more blue, more bluish cool. So you see how I just kind of, a lot of times I'll just mix my colors like that in little bands, and then I can kind of quickly scan my eye, do those work together? Mm, not great. It could be maybe a little more bluish. Michael, just out of curiosity, why did you put paint gray in there? Uh, I just thought it might be a shortcut to make some things darker. Oh, in here? Yeah, good question. See, you guys are great. Um, let's just see what happens when I mix this quinacridone. And, I mean, my manganese blue hue and quinacridone, because I just said that it makes a beautiful purple. And then I showed you a really ugly plum purple. Mm -hmm. um, it makes a very dark color. so. A lot of times when mixing purples, you can't hardly read them until you get some white on them. It's still pretty plummy, but I, it's been a purple that I like. I see that kind of purple in nature more than a true purple. Besides flowers and stuff, I don't really see true purple, but I do see plum colors a lot. Um, let's add a little more manganese blue and see. But this is your opportunity just to play with some colors and maybe some uh, different experiments. Actually, this is more what I want. This was a dumb experiment. If I did, I had Payne's Gray. <clears throat> I like this better. All right. Carol saves the day again. Let's grab that and let's make that our color. I think that's more interesting. But I want it more towards blue than the plum. There we go. Now I think this will work. Let's hope. Michael, what yeah. is that paper actually called? This paper? Yeah. Uh, just oil painting paper. It's a pad. Actually, I just taped it all that all the pages together. It's not like canvas paper. It might be. 
It definitely has a weave to it. Or oh, does it? Okay. To it. It might well be. Yeah, I literally just moved a big cabinet and it fell out from behind it. <laughs> it's a nice big size. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it is big. It's uh, 18 by 24. I almost think it was like maybe something my daughter got and then never used because she never really paints with oil. She's pretty much an acrylics kid. So we'll never find this again. This paint? It's, yeah, this? no, this 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 paper pad. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like shopping at Grocery Outlet. Yeah, uh -oh, you don't find it at Grocery Outlet, but you might- You'll never well find it again. No, no they're oh, available. But probably online. Yeah, they're available in, in a lot of art stores. I, I just bought a couple different sizes of pads yeah, great for again yep. for experimenting oh, cool. on. Cool. So look at that. I'm really painting myself into a corner. That's a big gradation that's got to happen in the next little bit here, isn't it? Let's see. Can he do it? <laughs> no, he can't. They're called so canvas pads. Well, I bought a smaller one. I had not seen one that large for sale. So I. Yeah, I've got sure. a number of small, like uh, 12 by 16s were the biggest ones I have. Got a couple 12 by 12. Right. When I travel, they're great. This is the kind I play on, Fredericks, but I do like the uh, Centurion better. Do you still put gesso on it? No. You don't need to. I know people do, but if it's already oil prime, then you're putting a, an acrylic on an oil. So I don't know. If it's, it depends on what, how it's primed. Yeah, I don't know if it's oil prime or what they put on it. Ooh, I'm liking how these purples and oranges are kind of playing together there. All right. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and add some clouds just for a little bit of interest. I actually let my sky get a little too light towards the top. Let's just darken that a little bit more. I'm thinking that the sun maybe is kind of coming or setting over here. I can just kind of mark that. So my sky is going to be a little darker on this side, just kind of by the angle. Doing sure a lot of mixing on the canvas. Normally it'd be nicer if I could pre-mix some of these colors a little more carefully, but I'm just kind of having fun, trying to get things covered, creating gradations. Hopefully they make sense to the bands of the color that we've talked about a little bit. Got a lot of paint on there. All right, now can I add more paint onto that because I've already got a lot of paint. You know, I hear my students all the time like, oh, I had to stop because I had too much paint on it, which I completely get. And I completely understand that. And there's times that I do that, but I do want to show you hopefully that we can continue to paint into wet on wet. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to load your brush up with more paint and then you're also going to want to have a very nice gentle touch to your brush stroke all right so here we go let's add some setting sun kind of a color so i'm going to go pretty warm more yellowy in that area and a little bit lighter Maybe the sun is already kind of dipped below, at least where the picture is. I can just kind of All right, I'd love to have some clouds on there. So let's get back to our peach color a little bit, add a little white to that. Maybe let it be a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna add some of my cooler red to that. <coughs> What am I thinking here? Just kind of a, maybe a, the sky is all going this color. Boy, should I have some kind of a reversal cloud in there? 
let's just kind of Can you guys see that at all? Barely. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see it. Needed more paint. Load that brush up a little more. It was like that this morning in places. It was otherwise dark like the top and all over to the horizon with no sunlight and where the sun was coming through. It was just like that with that pinky orangey color on the bottoms of the gray clouds. Yeah, you've got a plethora of references to do this series with. Yeah. You're trying to make sure I'm cleaning the brush when I'm going from warms to cools. And I'm just being very fast with it. So I'm going to get some contaminated colors for sure. But sometimes that's kind of okay, kind of working on favor. So let's see if I can. I'm going to have to come back and brighten this cloud one more time yet. I can tell. I'm just not getting enough paint to make it stay but i want to also kind of cool down down here a little bit more mm. so i'm going to make those clouds one, one time brighter again just at least that lower guy I have to get properly juicy on this brush stroke to get it to actually show up. There we go. Mm -hmm. And let's go to our paints gray here just to be a shortcut color. I'll put some blue in there. Just doing one of the hardest things to do is put darks on top of wet lights because they want to blend. So I'm just barely I'm having to load that brush up. And I've actually got kind of a softer brush now. I'm loading it up a lot of paint. And I'm not going to be touching too much because each time I touch down to the surface, it's you know picking up some of that little light paint.
And I gotta remember when I'm painting pine trees to keep them irregular. I don't want them to look like uh, air freshener. So just kind of don't have to be too, too super specific. A lot of times a little messier is better. You guys are like, what pine trees? Fir trees. Fir trees. And let's see if I can get one more in there. It's getting risky. I like to squint while you're doing that, just watching the colors. And I'm sure, it makes it look better when you squint at my paintings. No, <laughs> it's just how it just makes it, it brings it, I don't know, it just brings it all together. <laughs> I like to just close my eyes when I'm painting so it makes sense. <laughs> well, the you did a really good job. So you're surprised. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Hope so. We'll see. That darn tape, right? Can't tell. But that makes the fun reveal at the end. All right. Let's let's do a sky that actually gets lighter towards the top a little bit, because that definitely can happen. Um, I think with this one, we'll raise our horizon line up a bit. So maybe I'm kind of thinking like, oh, I just keep wanting to add straight quinacridone, which is so strong. Oh, a nice color. Maybe let it get a little red, a little like that. So let's just kind of right about there. So a lot higher horizon. I mean, this one's really low. This one's not even there. Is that one in the middle? Almost, yeah. You can pretty, fix it. Pretty da living dangerously. Looks like a delicious dessert of some sort. <laughs> kind of a layered tart. Orange sherbet. Orange sherbet. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> sherbet, yeah. And again, I am doing what to me is almost like a cardinal sin. I am mixing on my painting, which I don't normally do. Um, you'll see in other classes where I'll actually pre-mix most of my colors. We call those mother colors. But in this, it's pretty loose and it's pretty fast. And again, so it'll I'll leave that up to you, what you guys see best for yourself. But uh, just know that you can really get yourself in a lot of trouble when you over rely on... Um, mixing on the surface that you're painting. All right, used all my white. Let's clean this area off and get some more paint out there. And let's just go ahead and make some room to play real quick. You see this all the time with when I have new students is that they'll use their whole palette area and then they end up just mixing little tiny piles and little areas that are left. And uh, 
you know, you don't have to throw it away like I'm doing. You can simply pick those up. That's why I also like to paint on glass most of the time. And now I've just got that pile over here. I can pick this up. And I've got a nice pile of purplish gray over here and it looks just like this color. So I can combine those. There we go. It's like I bought another paint, another two. All right. The whole thing was to put out more white. Okay. But I mean, I, I actually already kind of like what I have there. I feel like this yellow band could be a, a little smaller, like pushed down a little bit. So I'm just going to bring one more bunch of light in there. I maybe don't want it to get as dark at the top. And bring that back down. I'll take this little bit of pink that's on my brush and see if I can use that maybe as a little wispy cloud that's kind of floating around up there a little bit. Just a little subtle cloud. I don't even know if you guys can see it. All right, let's put some mountains maybe. And going back into space there. We pick up some of this red, this kind of sky color. Ooh, it's kind of weird. Just kind of thinking again, standing on top of a hill, looking down, maybe the sun's rising, maybe it's setting. I like to think it's rising, that way I'm up there early versus being stuck on the hill in the dark. Um, I don't know, maybe whatever. Michael, would you consider that first painting you did kind of a midday sky? Yeah, roughly. I think that this paint. Camera froze. Yeah, we're not hearing you. You're not moving. How about now? Yep, yep. better. Okay, cool. So what I did is I just ripped off a little piece of uh says, and I'm getting a warning that I'm getting bad reception. Uh, I ripped off a little bit of paper towel, rolled it up. I'm just going to use that and see if I can't lighten that band of pink just one more time, just so it's not quite as vibrant. Eh, still pretty bright. I think I would have to just take a little bit of uh, white to it or something. But anyways, I think, yes, midday, but I think that that line of pink is so bright that it's kind of hinting towards the beginning of sunset or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the next one would be dusk, sort of. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sun is, you know, I don't know if it's set below the horizon line, but it's, you know, definitely not quite in the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is probably, I think I'll probably bring you a little bit of a sun in here in just a second, but we'll see.
my daughter lives in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and that kind of looks like a sunset on the Blue Ridge. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Here, we'll put a little light there for her. There's her house. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, you could. Someone yeah. posted a painting the other, or a picture the other day. It must have had 11, I think I counted 11 ridges going back through till it All got right. to the sky. It was beautiful, but my goodness, it was steep. Yeah, we have these really beautiful viewpoints not too far from where I live that you can get up there and you can see you know all these different mountain tops and mountain lines yeah it's just beautiful yeah, there's just blobs going on there what does he think he's painting more pine trees I'm curious to see this one when we get it off the, get that blue tape off. I think we'll hopefully it'll look a little better here. Let's um, let's bring in a cloud or two. It's kind of low. Do you see how I'm changing the grip when I want a real soft touch? I just, I'm holding it from the side of the uh, canvas, like, when I, and when I want to be strong, a lot of times it's more direct. And then I'm also turning and slowly, and I'm just barely, barely, barely touching the canvas. There'll be times when you'll hear me painting, and it'll sound just like this. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And then other times where it's just, you know, and there's not a sound at all, it's just barely kissing the canvas who doesn't want to make out with their oil paints like bob ross used to say one one hair and some air one hair and some aim is that what he said one hair and some air oh one hair and some air yeah so <laughs> you touch the canvas one so far touch the canvas lightly <laughs> Yeah, I like that. All right, I'm curious to see that one. All right. Really pretty. Anybody got any other ideas? What other times of day do we have? We got... Something with big puffy white clouds. Puffy white clouds, boy. All right. Middle of a summer day. Summer yeah, day. Stormy clouds, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right now, right now, I have stormy, stormy clouds outside, and it's thundering. Very unusual for this time of year. We put all this brown on there. Jeez. Should have told me I was going to be painting bright clouds on this, not dirty <laughs> brown clouds. That could be your stormy sky. No, yeah. I guess good. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll let that go kiss. for it. Woo. Whatever you want. Whatever I'm doing. All right, I'm going to move this up. Um, okay. Well, let's think here. So let's, let's go towards the purple at the base a little bit. Purple at the horizon line, just a touch. Ooh, that's a nice color. Do I like it though? I mean, I like it, but do I want it there? Subtle. Mm. 
I like this a little bit better. So that'll be our horizon line. Let's go low again since we want some big, big clouds. Warm it up really quickly a little bit. I think the bands along the horizon are often my favorite things to paint. I just love the uh, little bit of hint of warmth and it, it just feels a little bit off a lot of times, but it looks so good to do in my opinion. Um, and I guess if you guys, once you get to know me and my work, you'll see these little red bands in a lot of my landscapes. I use it a lot. A lot of times, even when it's not appropriate, doesn't even speak to the right time of day, but I just like it. I think it goes all the way back to that story I was telling you about seeing the, um, seeing the uh, dust being kicked up by all those tractors really made an impression on me. Maybe it can be a tiny bit more thoughtful this time. Meaning, pre-mix a little more. It's strange that I'm literally just putting down a color and then somewhat responding to it. I know that you said something, that you wanted some kind of clouds, but whether you're going to get them, I'm so fun. big I'm coffee pretty, clouds. <laughs> I'm one of those chefs that, you know, you don't even get to know what the menu is. You just come in and you get what I make you. Now, now you're talking like Fadi. <laughs> That's how he cooks. Dirty brush, didn't want that dirty mark there, so just pick it up with my paper towel instead of trying to smear it in. A lot of times it's better to just get it off there. I have so many students that will be like, oh no, I put down the wrong color. Smear, smear, smear. Trying to get it, get rid of it by just painting it out, and then all of a sudden you just end up with a muddy paint. Just take a breath, take a sec. <laughs> Recapture yourself, get a hold of yourself, and uh, just get that offending color off there. It's just the wrong color in the wrong spot is all. It gets it. It's not too offended. Knows you still love it, but just not there. I always say that, you know, muddy colors are often just like weeds. You know, they're they can be beautiful, but they're just in the wrong spot. You know, maybe in another part of the yard or maybe in a, a field somewhere, they can be just beautiful. Be smart. Pick up a whole new brush for this next part here. Hmm. 
you use a touch of this beautiful color, but barely, barely. It's just going to be almost white. So the top of this guy is not very dark, but it's still going to be probably my darkest spot. Sorry about that. Sounded <laughs> like that trombone that gets played when things aren't actually funny. <laughs> Sounded like your ship has come in. There you go. That sounds better. A little more optimistic. So very light, very high key, meaning there's nothing very dark. Like my darkest dark, when I put up a dark paintbrush, you can see how much darker I can make that anything I want in there dark. So I don't know, let's, let's put some ground in there so we have something to bounce off of. Um, probably don't want it pure black, but let me see. let's get some green since it's just remember it's sunny, it's not sunset, it's not setting behind it. So we can get a little bit of green. Let's put a little red in that green to warm it up just a touch. That's a lot. What do we want here? Mm -hmm. uh, peninsula. Kind of thinking what would play off these really pastel-y purples and pinks and airiness. We'll just kind of put a little rocky shoreline here. Maybe that will be kind of a nice counterpoint, making it even feel more delicate. I don't know. It's the art of thinking by not thinking by Michael Orley. Just responding. Not to be critical, but were they supposed to be big puffy clouds? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the one in the lower right. You get what I serve you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's painting this from a reference photo in his head. The cranky chef. <laughs> yep. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> Pretty scrambled eggs. Sorry about that. I'm standing too far away from my phone to turn it off. My, I haven't talked to my daughter in a couple of days. And it's finally calling, but not the best time. I think she's going to tell us whether or not she gets to be an RA next year, which would be great as far as saving some money. RA is the person that lives in the dorms with the freshmen. And then she'd get free room and board. She'd be really uh, resident advisor. Resident yeah. advisor, yeah. So wonderful. Hopefully she got it. The fact that she's called back three times makes me feel like maybe she has. That would be wonderful. Yeah, she'd be very good at it too. She's so friendly and 
makes people feel so welcome. Our daughter did that and it it was so awesome. Oh good. I was afraid you were gonna say something different. No, she it it was really a good experience for her. Oh good. Yeah, I mean for me it's mostly about being able to save twenty thousand dollars. The rent and the food is so expensive in Boston. You know, she'd rather live with some friends, but huh, well, a little weird, but no, it's I good. We need to change color there. Let's make them into puffier clouds, though. Well, we have to use that when we go to Hatteras, there is a brilliant blue sky with the biggest, tallest cumulus clouds you have ever seen. And it makes me wonder if you guys get that or not. Your weather comes from a different direction. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes we do. There's yeah, we do. Times when you get the big blue sky and the puffy white clouds. We get that on the Eastern Oregon desert, uh, usually in August. August, September. Yeah, I was there in August and September. The times I've gone and it was perfect weather and there was no rain and the skies were gorgeous and big puffy white crowd, clouds all over. I recently moved to Central Oregon and we get a lot of big skies. Well, what part of Central Oregon? Um, I'm in Metolius, which is just south of Madras. Yeah, I know. We spend a lot of time in Bend. I love Bend. Can't afford it. Yep, nobody can afford Bend. <laughs> um, I found the weather was, um, I like the weather here, and uh, the prices are incredible. It's become a very, a very popular retirement spot because the, the uh, cost of living is much less. Sure. Where, Where are you? I'm, um, it's actually Metolius, and it's about uh, four miles uh, south of uh, Madras. Hmm. Which is on the east side of the Cascades for people Correct. who don't know Oregon Correct. well. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the dry you know, side. The, right, the dry side. That was my idea, the dry side. I like the palette over here. Yeah, I lived in Bend for a year after living on the coast for almost 30 years. And I hadn't been home in, oh, a couple of months. So my eyes had gotten used to the, the soft grays and purples and sage greens of the desert. And I flew home in December. And it was like this riot of jungle greens was incredible. My eyes almost got burned out from the bright colors after a year in the desert. The other thing that I've found that I really, really, really like is I like mountains. And yes. uh, and I get to see here, I get to see the mountains every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Which did you like better between the coast and you said Bend? Me? Well, whoever said that you used to live on the coast and then. Well, I live on the coast now. I lived in Bend for a year. Oh, which do you like better? I love both of them. That's the hard part. I'd like to have a house in both places, but that's right. not going to happen. They're just so different. Um, you get four seasons in Bend, and here you get rain, 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 a little bit of sun and rain. But they're both wonderful in their own ways. Even mm -hmm. though we're that far south, it's still that rainy. What's that? Even though you're that far south, it's still that rainy. Oh, yeah. We still get the influence from Alaska this time of year. In the summer, uh, in the winter, it comes up from Hawaii. That's why it's warmer in the winter here. And that's why we get a lot of rain. And then summer, the wind comes down from Alaska and it's chilly. Interesting. But the, you can't beat the beaches. They're gorgeous. Right, Michael? Yes, indeed. Which beach? Bandon. The Oregon beaches. They're so rugged. Uh, where are you? A little town called Bandon, about oh, 90 yes. miles yep, yep. north of California. They have that nice golf course. I guess. <laughs> I'm not a golfer. Yeah, it's very famous for its golf course. Band in Dunes. It's one of the top golf courses in the country.
really pretty. Ah. Looks like really early morning. I love it. Uh, yeah, it does. Really early, like before the sun is even up. Man, that kind of seems to be my way today. That is gorgeous. It works. That. <laughs> A little offshore fog there, picking up the light colors. Palette is just, I mean, the colors, the, the values are just amazing. Look at that. And the bit of green in the upper sky, it's so pretty. I love it. Oh. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm not sure, you know, which ones are actually going to be interesting or, you know, something I might want to revisit. But again, I'm just having fun uh, kind of seeing a color, responding to a color. Seeing a shape, responding to a shape. So that's what I, I mean. I just want you guys to just, you know, the bands of the sky, that's the big thing. But then just have freedom to play, have freedom to make some different marks, maybe use some brushes you wouldn't normally use. One thing I would definitely like you to be, keep in mind is the changing of the amount of pressure and the amount of paint, that not every brush strokes, every brush stroke is the same. Letting it skim, trying, if you're not comfortable painting wet into wet, maybe trying a little bit more of that. I've seen some people just take a palette knife and just kind of randomly put paint across it and then um, kind of feather that out. And that makes really interesting cloud shapes too. Yeah. More organic. Absolutely. I mean, this one might benefit from some of that, actually. A little bit darker on this portion of the sky. Still very vibrant color, very, very healthy feeling, I guess. I don't know. Sky holes. That holds the best part. There's a painter that we know lives over in Bend, and to me, he paints backwards. He'll put in like his cloud colors and then cut in the sky over the clouds, and it just hurts my head. Uh -huh. I mean, it's his style, it works. He's a wonderful artist, but it's just I don't know. I'm I too orderly or stuck in my ways. I don't know. Yeah, you'll see me doing that a lot more with my trees, where I'll just paint the whole big tree shape and then chop in some sky holes. Yeah, cut back into it. Yeah. But yeah, let's see if we can't get away with because this shape is so solid. I feel like it could be. I think it anchors it. I think it looks good. But what do I know? Well, it's just a test. I can always bring it back. Yeah, I don't like it. So it's... All right. Well, we'll see what that looks like as well here soon. Let's bring a little of that blue, a little darker into the water. Depending on what you do with the next two, um, maybe nocturne. Nice. Yes. 
this one seems like it wants a nocturne since it's got a big mm -hmm. coffee stain over it. All right, just a couple more brush strokes to this one and I'm moving on. So you can see time is up already. Um, for those of you new students, um, so you can see time just kind of flies. And I also always have too many things I want to teach and do in each class. So a lot of times I'm like, I'm going to do five demos today or six. Uh, plus the other one, seven. Um, so, you know, I just, I'm a little too ambitious as a teacher that I feel like there's just so much to share and so much to learn. And um, so anyways, I apologize ahead of time, especially if you have lunch dates. And I may be well, speaking- Some of us might have dinner dates. And, or dinner dates, yes. <laughs> I don't even know who's it's still creeping up on wine time. There you go. Yes, I, it I, is. I do not mind you guys having a glass of wine while you watch. We don't have to squint so hard then. Uh, All right. I'm not turned. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like one of my other references. I wonder how. So, what are you thinking with that, Gail? A little Dennis Sheehan. Dennis. One of your yellow, one of your um, yellow skies with the moon rising. All right, let's do that because um, so let's just have fun. Black moon rising. Black moon rising. I am just gonna scribble because that last one got a little tight. What else do I want? That got crazy. What do we want? Yes, but what's it going to be, Mike? I have no idea. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Besides kind of a fun little abstract. What color is it going to be at the top, Gail? Um, Dark, Payne's gray kind of thing. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at some of his paintings. Yeah, that would have been helpful if I was looking at some of his paintings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to put your moon in. Definitely. Wipe it out. Yeah, I'll see if this paper will let me do that. Yeah, now see, you've got, you've, right. got, you've got a lake there. You've got a few trees in the background. What do you mean? I'm done. Yep. No, where's your moon? Huh. Oh. Good. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Ooh, with the clouds going over it. Yeah, yeah I want to see the clouds that go over it because I have that to finish on my moonlit assignment from last time. Reveal yourself, landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see lake in the middle, and that's. Show yourself. <laughs> there you go. So I need to leave, but next time uh, we're just supposed to have 
Uh, some of these as many of these as you want to make, you know, at least at least like two, at least like kind of one midday and then one of another. But if you know, if you want to make more, yeah, that's more okay. is probably better. So just playing, experimenting, bands of color is what it's about today. And um bands of color in the sky, that kind of that gradient. You can see how diverse it can be, and I'm hoping that if somebody saw this that wasn't in this class and didn't know what I was trying to do, would still be able to go, oh yeah, that's a sky, right? Um, and that's what's so wonderful about the sky and the landscape and everything else is there's just so much diversity that, you know, that can be there. So many times a day, so many weather effects, so many, you know, all the different things. Seasons, they all affect the colors we see. Um, and then, the sky is just so important because it literally is the source of the light for everything we see. Perfect. I think mm -hmm. all you need is your moon. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. I do. The land just really took shape. Mm hmm I think he has special paper towel. <laughs> that must be a secret paper towel. Or perhaps it's the finger. It's the magical fact that they. I haven't seen any Q-tip action today. Maybe you need to do that. Yeah, for some Q -tip on. All right. So reaching into my drawer and pulling out my jar of Q-tip. <laughs> 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 Michael, how is your daughter doing in Boston? I will I need to answer that call here soon, but I think she, I mean, for all in all, she's doing amazing. She just I bet. absolutely loves her friends and her classes. I mean, you just couldn't ask for a better responses um, as a father. Yay. Yeah. So I'm very happy and she's doing well. She finds her classes interesting and her teachers um, interesting. She says, even the assignments that all the kids hate. She still she because and she grew up with an artist and stuff. She knows the why. She knows the why. Mm -hmm. She's ahead of her class. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah. Do you get to see her very often? Uh, only on FaceTime. She's only been home once, and then instead of coming home for spring break, she's actually going to go to Barcelona. Oh, lovely! Yeah, they just finished that big church. Did they actually finish it? Yep, it's finally, finally, finally done. It looks amazing in the photos. They got all these, because uh, we were there when it was still in progress six or eight years ago, and it was amazing then, but now they've got it all lit up and interesting effects going on and just wild. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Is it a Gaudi? Cathedral or yeah, no, it's older than Gaudi. Mm. They've been building it for well over a hundred years now. But it was oh my goodness, really crazy. Isn't it Sagrada Familia? Yes, that is it. Mm. Do we want this? Do we want the moon up in the sky? Probably not down too low. Yeah, no, not too high. I mean, it's not based on your light source. Yeah. It looks well, like you've got a little bitty, it looks like you've got a little bitty light spot there. That much light, so I can just put the moon anywhere. Yeah, it looks like you've got a little bitty light spot there close to the tops of your trees. All right, let's try this. Here you go. better to light it from underneath yeah sorry <laughs> all of a sudden there's a new cloud there. you know a nice color though
feel like I over lightened along this horizon then. All right, time for the big brush. I'm going to redo it. All right, this time with intention. This tree is weird. Go to you, maybe you, maybe a little up there, there. Let's give you some sky holes. And so it's kind of an earthy nocturne of sorts. Is that what you guys are seeing? Yep. Yeah. George Ennis, what George Ennis, yeah. Yeah, it's been popular this class. I was looking at a new artist this um, prior to this class, and she does um, tree shapes, you know, no leaves, just a, the shapes. Oh, interesting. That's tough. Yeah, I thought it. In, um, she does that with all kinds of trees. Oh, do you mean they have leaves on them, but you just don't see the leaves, or do you correct? Mean they're, they're she just paints. She just paints the general shapes. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like bare trees. I'm like, oh man. No, 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 no. Um, but she genuinely shows no leaves whatever her name is mary garish g-a-r-r-i-s-h oh yeah no i know her she's a pretty famous tonalist yeah um but the way she handles her trees and her clouds are pretty cool yeah yeah i do like how she just kind of blocks in there are usually like two values and she just kind of simplifies blocks them in yep or just or they're just kind of backlit So I'm guessing what I'm hoping you're getting from this ugly painting is um, that, you know, you can see I can, what's nice with the oils is I can change my mind. You know what I mean? I can go back in, I can uh, add color, I could subtract color, even on paper where it's pretty absorbent and it's a different surface that I'm used to still having fun. Who said that was ugly? Oh, that's about? beautiful. Michael said it was ugly. No, I'm calling him on. No, you're wrong. It's lovely from my house. Okay. Thank you. I think the only sky you're missing is a stormy sky. Yeah. Well, if this one doesn't shape up, it's going to be a stormy sky. <laughs> It looks a little stormy. The moody sky. The class is over. I'm going to go out and take some photographs and post a couple on my Padlet page so you guys can see what big Ooh. dark clouds look like today. Ooh. Please do. Yeah, and again, you guys, feel free to share your reference photos if you're okay with other people, you know, possibly painting them or whatever else. I don't Got care. Nice ones. I think so far it's mostly been Gail and uh, 
Linda that have been doing that, but you know, but only if you want people to paint from them or whatever else. I don't know if this is working or not. Might take one more heavy handed hit with the uh, big brush, but I kind of wanted to see what would happen with um, compliments. Yeah, but now the sky looks so silly, the cloud. So let's just see if we. I don't know. This one got away. You lost your yellow. One more time. You lost the moon. Yeah, there's no moon for sure. Find Let's... the cloud. It's like a big fog bank rolled in. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Now it's better. <laughs> I don't have any left to put more color on there. So this one will be just all subtracted really fast. We'll just see. It might have soaked in. We'll see. Oh gosh. What's that? Now it's an abstract. Yeah. All right. Last chance painting. You want to live or not? All right, so evidently there's a limit to how much fun I can have or just be <laughs> so free, being so freewheeling with uh, some, you know, having some references. Maybe I should have looked at a Dennis Sheehan when you mentioned his name. Um, might not have hurt. Um, You'll have one more panel or one more box. Yeah. Redeem myself and come back and all the new students are gone next week. Yeah, I think this painting wants to live. I think so. I agree. It was nice water down there for a while. See, it's still there. Very earthy, very, very tonal. Looks like it's been in a church where they were using way too much incense for hundreds of years. You're right. Somewhere in Europe, some forgotten Bulgarian monastery up in the mountains where they don't clean their paintings ever. All right, I'm really putting this paper through its paces, like how much abuse, how much rubbing back and forth can it take? It's holding up reasonably well, hasn't started to tear or anything. Look how powerful that Indian yellow is.
We just don't want you to be the ugly painting on the surface where everybody else looks nice. And then I'm just like, ah, don't look at that one. But I guess I can, it's oil, so I can just literally paint over it. Well, I'm actually, and I'll post it on Padlet, but I'm looking at one of his paintings. It's called Edge of Night. And you're pretty darn close. All right. How much did he sell it for? A bazillion dollars. <laughs> All right. What? How much did he sell it for? A lot. One what? bazillion dollars. A bazillion dollars. I need to hang out. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. So good to see you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Sure. Mm -hmm. Every little fingerprint. All right, last, last dab here. Let's just call it, we'll leave it alone after this and we'll just let it be and see what, oh, I have an idea. Oh, it wouldn't work. So I don't know yet what, how to put a moon into a picture with like some light in it, really. But I guess the sun could be setting and then the moon could be up there. Sometimes I can see the moon coming up and the sun going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I just don't know how close together they would be. We could try. Let's one one last silly attempt at a moon. Why okay. not? There you go. Yeah, that's better. I think you guys are just saying that's so all I'm done with it. Voila. <laughs> You're like, leave it alone. Ta-da. All right. It's a moon. Nice. Yeah. That's a moon if ever I saw one. That's mm. right. And that's our story and we're sticking to it. That's right. Yeah. It's not just a silly fingerprint. It actually has to be brighter than the cloud. <laughs> I don't know. I see, and I think that that's my favorite. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Wow, all right. So evidently having you guys drinking wine during class is a good idea. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Already a half hour long. You guys want one more? Um, Storms. This should be good. Just scrub the crud out of it. Okay, that one I may have to look up a reference for. What kind of storm are you thinking? What about those ones? I just love them where it's stormy in the sky and like field, uh, there's a field of um, canola flowers, I think it is, that are real kind of yellow and it's just such a pretty contrast, but that's just me. I, I've seen pictures like that and they're beautiful. Kind of stepping back. I actually do kind of like that one from a little way away. Mm -hmm. The moon looks kind of silly as the only white thing in there. Well, it could be a dystopian sun. Right. Are you looking at Pinterest? What's that? Are you looking at Pinterest? Is that what you're looking no, at? No, I was just stepping back. I'm just putting Payne's gray on. I like Michelle's idea. It's going to be kind of a dark, stormy, but I'm going to have it 
catching some sunlight, just like the flowers in the foreground will be. Here's uh, one. I'm sorry, folks. I have Here's to. Finish, so I hope you all have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you maybe see you tomorrow. We'll see, see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Thank see you. you. Here, Michael. Bye bye. You will definitely see me tomorrow. So I need to. Okay. I'm going to have to check out too. I've enjoyed it. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. All right. Hold it up again. (laughs) You're on the way. Oh, perfect. All right. Nailed it. Thanks. Got it. And it's got the the rays that she's wanting. This one doesn't have much to do with the bands of color, but, you know. Well, it's got a band of, you know, Payne's gray and lighter gray and white, and then goes into kind of an Indian yellow toward the um, horizon. Okay. It doesn't have a name. And maybe share <laughs> share it to the Padlet page so I can actually see it. Okay. Maybe fix it up I a little bit. That. <laughs> I'll share that one and the Dennis Sheehan one I found. Okay, yeah. But that's a cool stormy sky. I mean, it's got Indian yellow and and uh, really dark green in it. Sap green. The glare is pretty bad. See up there. What's happening on the ground in that painting? Um, it looks like the Indian yellow is the underside of the storm cloud. Okay. And then what's happening on the and ground? And then um, the, is ground the ground is actually picking up light or is it dark again? Um, the ground, there is a really white, like um, underneath the um, yellow storm cloud. And then the horizon, I mean, the horizon, let's see the white. Uh, the horizon so line is again, it goes, the clouds go dark, light, and then dark again. Yep. They're oh. orange and then they go dark. And then there's like a burst of light of white underneath those dark storm clouds. Oh boy. Okay. What is going on? But yeah, that looks like a pretty bad storm. But the horizon line is just as flat as it can be with with really nothing showing. Sounds good. (laughs) Easy peasy. Maybe some kind of 
field lines or something either that tractor, or just um, tractor, like an ocean path a big body of water where it's just flat but there's no real reflection on it either this is it's definitely a sky painting I think that would be a challenging one to to try and paint. Looking at it, I want right. you to paint it next for next week. Yep. Look, look at the padlet uh, in the photo reference. I just put a couple of uh, I'm putting photos on there. Yeah, okay. I'll put I'll put the two I was looking at on there too. And that Mary Garish. Um, has some poofy clouds for you too. Oh. I'll, um... Yeah, we'll be covering puffy clouds. So just so you know that I know I upset you guys by not doing any puffy clouds. We're going to get to that because that's where we need to learn about form and structure. Okay. Michael, in the last session that we did this, you had a beautiful puffy cloud picture. Yeah. Yep, but I had a reference. Yeah, it's definitely easier with reference. Yeah, here's a few. <clears throat> She's got some pretty cool puppy clouds. I'll um all right. Well I think we'll just about call it, but maybe we can uh I have one with really light blue sky. Um like in the lower stratus and uh, the grays and fluffy blues and they're all at angle. It's, it's really. All oh, my brushes are so dirty. Rain showers. Yeah, and that's what this reference looks like. It's raining. I like it. We'll see. I mean, it, it's got a weird shape. Oh, wow. That glare is something else for you guys. Sorry. Get that dealt with here in just one second. So I still got glare, but 
I, are the lights quite a bit better though, as far as glare is concerned? Yeah. Dark? Yes. Yeah. Super wet darks are always tough. I mean, I could just kind of, Ooh. let me just kind of dap that a little bit, get some of that oil out of it. I'm looking forward to seeing all of these without the. Yeah, blue. that's what I want to get to before we go. I just want to pull that tape off. It's like my favorite part. <laughs> the big reveal. Yeah, I mean, you're, pa you're painting what I'm seeing out back, out uh, the southeast is this big ball of dark black clouds, all puffy, like right where you are in the top, that triangle right there. And it's kind of a pinky yellow where the yellow is here. It's pinky yellow with that white, with that pale gray stripe in it. And the mountains look dark, dark, dark indigo. I'm, I, are you saying at, like outside your window? Outside, I just stepped out and took a couple of photos and that's what I'm seeing out back. The yellow has got a little more red in it, like the quinacridone in it, but, but it's a... Uh, it, it's oh, it's beautiful. It out, it's terrible weather outside. It's thundering, and it's we're going to get a really bad storm. But that's okay. Where do you live? I'm in the Arizona desert in the. Sonoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's like what you're seeing is a front move in, is what you're saying. Yeah, a front's coming through. Yeah. Yeah, and it always yeah. looks, and they look like mountains in the distance almost. Yeah, those big old thunderhead kind of things. Those things. Yeah. It's, it's like rolling in the sky. It's really tremendous. You'll have to post it. Did I posted a couple of them. Already. Good. All right. Last couple of brush strokes. Famous last words. Just want a little bit of dark down in here. See, that looks like a front rolling in to me. <clears throat> the skies that fascinate me are when a storm is ending and the skies like that, but there's a really golden light on the ground. Yeah, that could be just so <laughs> crazy. The contrast is just like, wow. You think I should make a line any brighter here? Yeah. One touch lighter. Because mm -hmm. it looks like you've got a really soft background and maybe you're picking up a little light on some water there. So maybe yeah, just a little. Kind of... mm -hmm. yeah. Like the rain is kind of. Yep. Just one more. little spot where it's a lot brighter. There you go. Like Perfect. that. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's I'm gonna have to count how many brushes I have out. I live next door. I clean your brushes for you. Uh, I think you and I would get in a little bit of trouble if we if you live next door. I think I clean you. I love to clean brushes. I paint like you. I have like a handful, one in my mouth, one behind my ear. And yeah, that's the way I am. I work. And a pile of Q-tips and wadded up paper towels on the floor. Yeah. Exactly. I know. I'm amazed how many times I miss the garbage can with the Q-tips.
trying to get a little bit of that pink warmer light. Okay, phew, that's crazy looking. Let's pull it's off some storm. tape. Let's pull off some tape. So I'm gonna scoot the camera back. So I'm gonna have to pull that off. All right, here's the big part. The big pull. reveal. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the camera and then restart. So we have a whole separate video just for the reveal. Gotta stay tuned, watch part four for the reveal. <laughs>